Is building a computer really worth the time and effort? Let's find out. After watching an episode of Retro Recipes where Lady Fractic builds herself a computer, my daughter wanted to build a computer for herself. I wasn't quite sure how serious she was about it, but she kept watching the two-part series over and over again, which indicated me that this was a project that had to be completed. The files for the shell of this computer can be found in Thingiverse. I asked what color, and that is when my daughter's face brightened up and she said, pink. Before I could begin the printing process, my 3D printer, an Ender 3, needed one particular upgrade. I've been having issues with the Bowden tubes becoming sloppy on larger prints and fouling up. The solution was to install a direct drive print head to ensure I would eliminate that particular issue. This worked great until there was a power surge which ultimately required me to replace the mainboard. So I went for an upgrade there as well too. The printing took, in total, over 190 hours, not including the ones that uh, failed. I did set the fill density to 40%, which was absolutely overkill, but I wanted to be sure that this would stand up to the abusive rigors it would likely encounter through its life. Not including the failed prints, this case used 2.1 kilograms of pink PLA+, plus, some of that being support material. Since this was Ileana's project, she worked on cleaning up the prints and assembled them. Of course, I did help here and there, but it was mostly her. The case does have a bit of gravity to it and doesn't feel like cheap plastic. I would say it is the sturdiest computer case I have ever encountered. It's pretty good though, no. The keyboard fit is absolutely perfect. There doesn't appear to be any slop in the fit, which is amazing, really. The manufacturing variation in consumer electronics of the keyboard, combined with the variations introduced by the 3D printer, had me doubting anything would fit well together. The monitor was a bit tight to install, but nothing a small file couldn't clear up. Since I had an underutilized Raspberry Pi 4, I decided to use that in the machine but I really wanted Ileana to be able to use this like a mobile computer. So I set out to get some kind of battery backup for it that could handle the computer as well as the screen. This also meant that the original design and recommended component list was not going to work for this situation. Basically, as far as the internals are concerned, I threw that all out the window and made some changes. The issue with the battery backup that I chose it's a UPS for a Raspberry Pi, was that in order to manage the computer, I would have to open the back lid, stick my hand inside, pick up the Raspberry Pi 4 with the attached UPS, and fiddle with it to turn it on and off on the rather undersized switch on that power board. Because when you shut down a Raspberry Pi, there's not really a way to turn it back on like a software method. This wasn't sustainable, so I needed to make a proper solution for not only supplying the power, but also some sort of a power switch, and I wanted to bring the USB ports forward to the back of the case as well. So here's where I strayed from the original design. First, the back right side opening of the machine where the power input was intended was just too small. Instead of using the prescribed piece, as per the original design, I took the back left part, mirrored it, and printed it so both sides would have the larger openings. I then set out to design some plates in the back for mounting the various bits to really finish off the machine as a true general purpose computer. The plates just used the plastic clips to hold in place. You know, like the kind you see on most modern electronics that end up breaking off after a few disassemblies. To ensure that my design was just as commercially viable, my clips will break off too if inserted and removed too many times. With everything screwed in place, connected, and panels clipped in, this really looks like a fine machine I would even buy if sitting on the shelf of a Radio Shack or Circuit City, uh, maybe even a KB Toys, a Woolsworth, or, or any five and dime out there. 
building something just to build something, although gratifying, is way more valuable when the thing you build serves an actual purpose. I'm sure that there are some great pink laptops out there that I could have given to my girl, but she doesn't want a laptop. She wanted to build something, and there's value in that aspect alone. This machine, although looks cool, is not just decoration for the kitchen table. This is a machine that is a practical education support appliance running OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, a version of Linux. It is being used for typing papers, typing tutors, and other open source edutainment software, you know, as well as doing research on the internet. The Pyforn side is enough to play some simple games, browse the web, and even enjoy a YouTube video or two. I can very easily connect to my self-hosted media server, and although the speakers are a bit weak, there's always the Bluetooth option for pairing to a larger set of speakers. Let's be fair, laptops aren't much better. They're not known for having great sound quality anyway. The overall design of the case, feel of the keyboard, the finished appearance of the back, and that this will run on battery, albeit for a limited time, makes for a nice user experience with this machine. You can start in the dining room and move to the living room without any issue or thought. Just pick it up, move it to the next location, plug it back in and keep going. A standard aspect ratio screen is perfect for the aesthetic of this machine. Sure, the resolution is a bit limited, but it is an 8-inch screen, so you know, what do you expect? The pink color of the case with the black keycaps and then turning the backlighting to pink really looks sharp. This is obviously my daughter's computer, and most certainly it is one of a kind that cannot be mistaken as anyone else's. This is the very definition of personal computer. As it sits today, the Raspberry Pi cannot suspend a RAM and return from it. It's just not possible. So I think I'll replace it at some point with a more robust computer. The Pi is fine for now, but for general desktop purposes, it isn't ideal. Sometimes the monitor seems to need some warm-up time. I often see artifacts on the screen, the kind of halo around it, which seemed to be an issue for Lady Fractic. The first monitor she installed that she ultimately broke, had some problems too. I'm not sure what the problem is. I've checked the connections without success, but it clears itself up in short order. In retrospect, I wish I would have done some additional modifications to the case to have a convenient card reader on the side or front of the keyboard area. I suppose I can add it after the fact, but I wanted to be sure I didn't mess up the case at all for a not necessarily needed feature. Sometime in the future, I'm going to return to this project to do a major upgrade of the computing unit. I want something that's x86 based, none of this ARM business, that can do some light gaming. Not that this is ever going to be a gaming powerhouse, I just want to have more compatibility so it could do some more casual gaming. I would like to explore the possibility of creating some different backplates to allow for more tightly arranged USB ports to allow space for some sort of video out. I think it would also be convenient if I could plug this into an external monitor. Also with more efficient USB allowed, I could also add an SD card reader as well. I don't know, I'm just thinking, kind of in the dreaming stage here. It's something I'd like to have, it's not really critical. Making these upgrades to the internals could then conceivably make this machine used for many more things other than the basic computing tasks it does now. Taking the limiting factors off of it could really make this a fantastic user experience for anyone. This is a great computer for my daughter. She enjoys using it. The form factor is fun, and outside of the limitations of general computing on a Pi, this thing is quite pleasant to use. I will be, passively, looking to replace the Pi with something x86 based that can handle being suspended to RAM and such. I'm looking at either a laptop motherboard with battery or possibly something like an Intel NUC. I just have to be sure I can fit whatever it is inside of here successfully. I did have the suggestion of using a framework laptop mainboard, which is something to consider, but does stray a bit from my reutilization of old tech. Regardless of what powers this machine, it is a joy to use and fun to look at. I'm hoping for many years of use out of this machine. If you happen to get this far in the video, please consider liking and subscribing, as I find it quite motivating to know that the time spent making these videos was worthwhile. Coming up soon, I will be revisiting my Pi 400 running OpenSUSE and what I'm doing for a convenient GPIO solution. 
Until next time, thanks for watching.